Cobden House is a 17-storey high-rise block containing 134 flats in Blakenhall Gardens, Wolverhampton. The block is one of six high-rise blocks on the estate built by the local authority in the 1960s. During the 1990s, the block became increasingly unpopular with residents and prospective tenants, despite local authority investment and improvements. In July 2000, Wolverhampton City Council commenced the rehousing of the 72 tenants living there and started plans to demolish the block. Some 18 months later, the last tenant moved out and the demolition contractors, Coleman and Company, were appointed. Due to the size and height of Cobden House, the safest method of demolition is by controlled explosives. And as this would be the first type of demolition carried out by Wolverhampton City Council, the council enlisted the help and guidance of neighbouring authority Sandwell Borough Council, who had successfully completed 20 controlled explosive demolitions of their own. Fire! Works on site commence approximately 20 weeks before the building is ready for the final demolition. Over this period, many skilled personnel and technically competent professionals work on the project to ensure a successful blowdown. In the six days prior to blowdown, activities on the site intensify with months of intricate planning being implemented. The explosive engineering team begin to charge the building with the explosives whilst heavy plant and equipment are delivered to manage the anticipated pile of rubble. Each of the 200 or so columns to be detonated are protected with heavy mesh wire and black protective sheeting. This will ultimately contain the explosive effects on the concrete. On the day of the blowdown, some 200 people work to ensure that the project is a success. The staff meet on site at 5 a.m. where all are inducted and issued with the relevant equipment to include digital radios. A secure area around the block is fenced and is called the exclusion zone. It's created for safety purposes and is fenced with temporary steel to maximise internal site security. During the same time, additional protection is placed, ensuring that the demolition does not cause any damage. Elevated platforms are used to maintain security within the zone, whilst contractors and council staff and police are strategically placed around its perimeter. Over 80 police officers, two support units and a police control unit are employed to ensure that the security within the zone is not diminished by the evacuation of the residents and all properties are safe and secure. Also, 50 council staff are involved on the demolition day to assist in the evacuation of over 700 residents and to ensure the evacuation zone is secure. All staff are issued with protective clothing and communication equipment.
all residents that live within the exclusion zone must be evacuated before the explosives are detonated. The evacuation is critical to the explosives team. They must be sure that nobody is left within the zone and therefore be affected by the blowdown. The preparation for the evacuation of residents begins three months prior to the demolition. Information is obtained from each property within the exclusion zone, whether a business premise or residential, to ascertain all details relating to the occupiers. It's vital to see if any residents require additional support on the demolition day in terms of transport, rest centre facility or medical assistance. It's best if family pets remain within their own home during the demolition, but some residents feel happier to take them with them. Small pet carriers are provided if required. Residents are required to leave through one of the set exit points so they can be recorded as having left the zone and issued with identity badges for security reasons. Well, you've got to have a rest, haven't you? No, not a cup of tea. Over 100 residents require transport to the rest centre, so coaches are provided at designated areas within the exclusion zone and three specialist welfare vehicles collect residents with mobility problems from their homes. Residents are given assistance by council staff in boarding the coaches if required. All right, Mr McKenzie. Yes, See you again. Take care. Each resident is registered into the rest centre, given a copy of the fire evacuation procedure for the building and a meal and refreshments. There's also entertainment for those that want to join in. to be sitting down, you silly great pudding, you. Too late on the chair. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So that's it. We've got more, so. But we do know it belongs to everybody's out. Okay. Once the exclusion zone is cleared of all evacuees and council staff return to a point of safety, the explosives team connect the building to the firing line and exploder. Final checks are carried out around the perimeter of the exclusion zone and personnel confirm it is safe to proceed. A police helicopter with thermal imaging equipment sweeps the area to ensure that no one is within the fencing and the police give the all clear, then the final countdown commences. We're about to commence the countdown. About to commence the countdown. Commencing 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, silence.